price limit on this guy here is $500. So this guy here comes in at a little bit under $500 as you see it, everything that's on here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and run through the build, run through how I set it up, why I set it up, and then uh, do some shooting. I have about 200 rounds on me right now, so we'll do some shooting as we're, uh, as we're talking about it, kind of show you actually why I do things instead of just talking about it in front of a screen somewhere else. Um, I'll talk about it out here and actually shoot it, go through my mentality about why I chose some of these things. So first things first, let's go ahead and talk about the upper. This is a Bear Creek Arsenal AR-15 upper. This is a 16 inch barrel. It is a 223 wild, one and eight twist straight. It's parkerized. It's not nitrated. Nitrated is a little bit nicer, but you're gonna spend a little bit more on that. Um, and I got this entire upper, as you see it, delivered for $170, incredibly cheap. Um, and it's been absolutely excellent. I haven't changed anything about the upper. Uh, of course, everything on it is stock except for, well, actually that's not true. I have changed out the gas block on it. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, moving back from that, we have the lower. The lower is a Palmetto State Armory lower. It was on sale on Black Friday last year for $129 with the Magpul grip and the Magpul MOE stock. I like both of those and they're good enough to where I haven't even thought about changing them out because I really like both of them. Um, inside of the lower, we have a standard PSA lower parts kit. It's been absolutely excellent. It's one of the best triggers or the best mil spec triggers that I have. Um, they're very smooth, they're crisp, they don't have any issues being low powered and not causing rounds to detonate. So they've done a really good job in just about everything that I've done. Today we're going to be shooting out of these P-Mags. Most of my mags are P-Mags. I have a couple uh, USGI Colt mags. Uh, but um, we're shooting Hornady 5.56 and Federal 5.56 as well, so nothing special with the ammo. Pretty normal stuff you can find anywhere. Now, from there, let's move on to the optic. This is a Vision King 1 to 6 LPV with an excellent throw lever. It's a very smooth transition from 1 to 6. I have a whole video on this guy. I've shot probably about three to 4,000 rounds with this optic on this rifle. It's an excellent optic and uh, hasn't failed me. I've taken shots out to 550 yards with it. I do a lot of close range work with it, a lot of long range work with it. Um, just pretty much excellent in every regard. Now the mount that it's sitting on is a Geisley Automatics knockoff. It's not actually a Geisley Automatics. It's the similar design, but it's one of those that you can find for like 30 bucks online. So this and the scope in total is like $100, $110 I wanna say delivered. So that brings our from $320 up to 300 and or sorry up to $430. So moving on from there from the essentials we have a Magpul MOE grip on here at least I believe that's what it is. It's a little tall and I actually prefer the BCM Gunfighter because it's a little bit thicker and shorter um, but this one here is nice and it comes with Loctite uh, already applied so it's been very secure. I might actually end up cutting off the bottom half of it or so just because I don't need that much to grip onto. On this side we have a Feachi this is a 1200 lumen light and on top I'm very simple and uh, a little ghetto so I like to use uh, just some 3M electrical tape to put on my pressure pad so I have a pressure pad and then an on off switch on front. Um, and then this one here, this light was about $30, the script's about $15, so that brings us up to like $450. And then one more thing to mention about the front of this gun is we do have a six prong flash hider that I got for 20 bucks. It's just a no name brand, but the LS2 flash hider that this came with uh, was exceptional and honestly I could throw this on there and there wouldn't be much difference. So uh, you don't need this, so I'm not really counting this in the price because you don't need it um, for this type of build and the LS2 flash hider that it came with is really good. The, the next important thing that has to do with the, the recoil system and kind of what I've done with it on here is I have a cotton arms adjustable gas block on here. I bought this gas block for $20. I've used them on three of my guns. I've shot about a thousand rounds through them now. I have not had any sorts of issues with them. And I have the gas system turned mostly off because Bear Creek Arsenal from the factory comes very over gassed. Now, if you notice on my hand, there is some gas bleed through. Uh, because from that hole on my hand, I do, uh, now that hole wasn't from the gas, it's just, this glove is just old. And uh, you can see that there is some gas stains on my hand just from being next to that gas block. Uh, moving back from there, in the upper part of the gun here, we have an H1 buffer, of which I just bought a pack of buffer weights. So I think I spent like seven bucks on that single one and a half pounds tungsten weight that's in here. And I also have a $10 Strike Industries recoil spring. So all in all, it's right at $500. It might be a few dollars over. It might be like 510 or something like that. But for just the rifle, not including ammo and mags and that sort of thing, $500 for a setup that has worked 
exceptionally well for me. I've never had a malfunction with the rifle. Um, and pretty much everything on here is pretty tested and true and it shoots very, very accurately. I'll show you some pictures of it. It's definitely an MOA gun, if not a little bit less than that. And the best group that I've ever gotten with any gun has been this guy at a little bit under a quarter MOA at 103 yards. So uh, with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and do some quick shooting with it. Um, like I said, I have some ammo and then we'll talk a little bit more about why I chose each individual part. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and Go up here to this first target, and we're about seven yards away. We got a, a man-sized target, a little bit smaller than a man-sized target, and we're gonna do five rounds and hopefully hit for center mass. We're hoping for A zones pretty much on this guy, which is inside of the nine circle. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and do five rounds from a low ready position, and uh, let's see how it does. Perfect. So the recoil on this guy is really minimal. The tuning that I've done to the back, with the heavier buffer, the Strike Industries recoil spring, and of course the adjustable gas block up front means that you can fire this guy very quickly, remain on target, keeps your shots in nice and close. A little bit, let's do five more shots into this white circle. We're about seven yards away. Go up here and take a look at it. So, I have one, two, three, four, right next to each other, right where I want to bring them down to center, keeping my cadence just fine. Uh, one flyer is actually my first round. I pulled in high, recoiled, brought back down to center. Um, for this one here, I know my drops or my holdovers for my scope. Uh, I have it at one right now, so I know that I'm two dots down at this far away. Uh, pretty easy, keep five rounds in there. Let's, uh, let's swap over and make it a little bit harder. All right, so we're about seven yards away. We're going to shoot into a three inch target. Let's get four rounds into a three inch um, essentially headshot and uh, let's try and do four rounds see how quick we can do it from a low ready position perfect so this one here obviously a much smaller circle about a third the area four shots in there not a horrible amount of time probably a couple seconds could be a lot faster on that though but it's a smaller target and the focus is to get them into the actual target and not just go as fast as I can. Perfect. Alrighty, so both targets. Center mass right here. Good job. And we have one, two, three, four, five shots. Alrighty, and so real quickly, this Vision King 1-6 to six has been excellent again. Uh, I've shot about 3,000 rounds through it or so now. Uh, I generally shoot it at 1, but every now and again when I'm going long range, flip it over to 6, uh, I find that it works out really good. Um, it has a really bright center dot. It's just a mill dot system, but it has a really bright center dot. So when you're on 11, it's daylight bright, and it works incredibly well. Uh, for fast picking up of targets, it has a very generous eye box. So for close range work like this, you know, under 10 yards, uh, very fast to pick up targets and uh, easy to keep on target, just like the rest of the gun is. So let's go ahead, let's do five more, see if we can keep five more in that box, uh, keeping it under a reasonable time. And uh, let's go. Alrighty. And let's say one, two, three, four, five. Bam, about 20 yards away. How many rounds I got? Plenty of rounds. We're gonna do five on the untouched dot next to the black. See it over there? Okay, so we're gonna go five on that guy. Try and do it in a reasonable time. Alrighty. I know I missed a couple on that one. My drop is not quite the same at 20 as it is at seven, obviously. First shot, second, third shot, and then adjustments. Adjustments to the center. The first shot, trying to get it on there as quick as possible on the first dot, using the second dot on my scope to get these two, and then realizing that was too low because I could see it because it shows up real nice on this, adjusting to the center. So those just happen to be super lucky that I got those stacked on top of each other like that. Let's do the same thing, five more shots. I 
definitely screwed up my grab in the first one. So when I swapped, tried to swap mags, I definitely reached for the wrong pocket. It's okay. I think I got them all in this time though. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. I slowed down a little bit more, especially on my first shot, but kept them all in the circle. That's the important part. So kind of the reason for shooting a smaller target closer ranges translates to a much larger target at a little bit further ranges. Most engagements that you're going to come into in the real world as a civilian are going to be within 10 yards. So most of my work translates into being shorter range and then long range is more fun stuff. But if you're into long range shooting, totally understand that. Alrighty, so one thing that I like to do with most of my builds is I like to have something up front that I can really grip into and I don't necessarily like to grab it like that because then I don't have stability over where the actual barrel is. So I like to be have my hand centered around the barrel so I can really direct where that's going. So, but I do like to have a vertical grip if I need to grab onto it, break into something, break a car window, something like that. So you can use it to really drive that into something or just to grab onto and pull back into yourself. So we're gonna do some quick shooting. Now again, this is just a standard LPK. So it's just a mil spec trigger, nothing special, but we're gonna see if I can do some quick shooting, five yards, five shots, as quick as I can into this target, trying to get A's and C's, everything inside of the seven on this guy. And uh, let's go ahead and get going. Low ready. Pulled one high on that guy. Let's see. Got like four rounds left here. One center, one center. That was okay. I pulled one high on that guy. But let's go ahead. Let's uh, cycle over here for a second. We're going to go two headshot, four body. I don't have enough to quite finish it. So I'm going to go two headshot, four body, and then I'm going to have to do a mag swap in there somewhere. So both in, right where I wanted those guys to be. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I shot this one a few times ahead of time. So all in, good time shooting really slow on the smaller target, because again, this top target is about a third the size, maybe even a quarter of the size of this guy. So I can take my time on the top one, get a couple shots in the circle where I want them, and then faster. Alrighty, so something I haven't really talked about yet is actually this sling, which I didn't mention in the price. Um, it's incredibly cheap, it's like $5. I have it attached here in the back, and then up front it's actually just attached to the rail by these hooks that are on the front of it. Um, very simple, it's about $5. I have it set up to where no matter how I have it arranged on my body, if I have it tight, I can still get it and bring it up. It's just kind of tight. But then if I need to actually move around, move around a barricade, work a little bit more, do something with my free hand, I can just go ahead and cycle out of it and be free and good to go. So something that I really haven't talked about is this light up here. It's a Feachi light. Feachi is a pretty budget brand for most of their stuff. I bought a few different items of theirs, some I like, some I dislike. This guy here works really well. It is incredibly bright. The run time is only about an hour, hour and a half. But if you need a huge amount of brightness for a cheap package, it comes with this very excellent mount on here, M-lock mount, and then you have these screws to tighten it down on, so it works really well. You can match it to pretty much anything, and it's real nice and tight to your rail. Um, it, would, might, it might be actually too tight if I was mounting iron sights or something up here, but on this specific build, I don't have iron sights. Um, you know, you could say, oh, hey, you have to have iron sights on all your guns. I kind of agree with that, but on this one here, they just, they just aren't on here. You can pick up a cheap set, pick up an expensive set, whatever is your personal preference. But uh, the light works really well in here. We'll roll on some B-roll of that actually going off in the dark and it is incredibly bright and works very well. I like to have that and just the quick access to my pressure pads up top, kind of uh, all anchored off of this vertical foregrip. So other than that, the ergonomics on here are all very simple. It's all mil spec. So everything's pretty quick. If you grab any AR-15, uh, you're gonna know how this guy's gonna go. So decent speed. Keeping that up, make sure they're all in here. Uh, uh, this guy's touching, it's a little out, but the rest of them are all in there. Upper body, uh, most of them inside the seven, just like I want, um, but I could definitely work on bringing them probably down inside this eight, be a little bit better of a range to be in. Let's go over 
over here. So I have one, two in, all good. And over there I pulled one really low, but other than that, the other ones are in there. So all good. Alrighty, so for about 500 bucks, you most certainly can find, build, set up a civilian style AR-10 that works, that's functional, that's accurate, that will do anything that you need it to do, and uh, will, you know, fire thousands and thousands of rounds reliably. This guy is probably now at around 5,000 rounds in total. We haven't really had a malfunction with it. It works great. The overall build on this, I really like. I really like the setup. It's good from anything from like we're doing out here at this really short range, you know, 10 to 20 yards, even shorter, and then all the way out to about 500 yards. Uh, further than that, you probably want a little bit different optic on there, just because this guy is a budget optic, so the clarity isn't what you would get off of something like a Night Force or something crazy high end like that, but you can definitely do it. So if you're looking to build a gun and you're just thinking about, you know, I can't spend that much money, you know, there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to save that much to buy my $2,000 gun and my $3,000 setup. Uh, you know, there's just no way I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, and if you're looking at it in a different way, if you spend $500 or if you have $1,000 to spend, you spend $500 on your setup and then you spend $1,000 on ammo or $500 on ammo to bring you up to that $1,000 budget, you're going to be much better off than somebody who buys a very, very expensive gun and shoots it very little. There are some compromises. It's not going to be the nicest thing in the world, but it's functional, it works, and uh, if you don't have one, you should definitely start investing in one. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the video. It's really hot out here. We've been out here for a while now, and this plate carrier is really heavy, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, end it there. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of this setup down below, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey you. Yeah, you. What are you still doing here? The video's over. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you still here? Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. The choice is yours. But if you do subscribe, thanks, and I like pizza. Peace out. Good morning, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful day today. Today we're talking about my brand new Bear Creek Arsenal gun that I got for $500. Here, let me just explain to you today. Let's get to it.